We did a show that won the Emmys for everybody where Alex goes to the psychiatrist. Um, and that was based on the death of my own parents, you know, where you just, you, lo you lose somebody and you realize it's, it's, it's later and it's, it's with you every day. It was one of the few ideas that I'd ever gotten. I got more than one, but maybe, maybe three, but this was one where I was sound asleep and I woke up. The idea woke me up and I just started writing it. And uh, what was interesting was a half hour. In the second part, Alex speaks directly to the camera, the disembodied voice of an actor, David Wohl, uh, playing the psychiatrist. And in the course of the rewrite week, it uh, became obvious that the show really wanted to be an hour. And again, typical of Brandon, I call him at home. I go, Brandon, we want to do it as an hour. And he goes, oh, okay. I go, and we, there can't be any commercials in the second half. And it's a little quiet. And then he goes, okay. And so that couldn't, I don't think that could happen today. I hope I'm wrong. But you had a guy, first of all, who could make the decision. You didn't have to call anybody else. And you had a guy who you could say, Brandon, creatively, it's going to be stronger. It's just better for the show. It's better for us. And he goes, oh, okay. Uh, I hope that's still the case. I don't know. And that was A, My Name is Alex. A, My Name is Alex, yeah. I wrote it with Alan Uger. And what was great about our show was um, when we did the rewrite that night, really major contributions, uncredited, from Michael Whitehorn and Mark Lawrence. And uh, just joyfully, you know, I remember specific jokes and stuff they had, you know, that was just it was great. And... Uh, Michael Fox was, it was really one of the greatest nights of theater I'd ever seen. I mean, that guy. Yeah, and the staging of it was, it was a yeah, lot different. Yeah, it was like our town. Yeah, that, but that's how it had come to me. It had come to me that way. Um, so I think I actually woke up, woke up and started writing that part. And then we went back and I, Alan Uger and I wrote, wrote the rest of it together. And then Alan, of course, had a lot to write about the second part as well. But... Uh, that was, that was in, in a way for me, and that was 1987, I think, that was the end of my real creative white heat investment with Family Ties. That was it. I had nothing, didn't have any giant thing left to write about. You know, and I felt it was amazing to have brought Alex this circle here, you know. Mike continued to grow as an actor. He won the Emmy, Golden Globe, and then the Emmy again. Um... And at the end, we had done seven years. We'd done 180 shows, I think, 90 episodes. And they wanted us to do an eighth year. Um, but, you know, we had so much respect for those characters and such affection for the audience and respect for the audience. And we didn't want to overstay our welcome. And, of course, Mike had a big movie career waiting, you know. That it was really took a great deal of money uh, left on the table. And, but we just we felt really good. We went off. We went off that week, number one. We were the number one show of all shows when we went off. But I remember about two years ago, I was sitting having lunch with Mike in New York, and out of nowhere, he just looked up from his chicken Caesar salad and he said, we should have done the eighth year, huh? I go, yeah, <laughs> it's too late now.